Sire, because he wandered about, and because he did not stay at one place. The same is recorded in Tadrul Urus Shachra Kamus. There it is also stated that the Messiah is he who is given goodness and blessings, that is, he is given these qualities in such measure that even his touch is blessed, and that this name was given to Jesus, for God gives this name to whomsoever he pleases. As against this, there is another Messiah whose touch was evil and accursed, that is, his nature was composed of a curse and evil, so much so that his touch gave rise to the darkness of evil and that of a curse. This name was given to the Messiah, who is the Dajjal, and to all those who are like him. The two names, moreover, that is, Messiah the Traveler and Messiah the Blessed, are not antagonistic to each other. One does not invalidate the other, for it is a divine practice that God names a man in more than one way, and that all such names apply to him. In short, Jesus being a traveler has been so well proved by Islamic history that if all the references were copied from these books, they would, I think, run into a big volume. What I have stated, therefore, should be enough. Section 2. Evidence from Books on Buddhism Let it be clear that Buddhist scriptures have made available to us evidence of various kinds, which on the whole is enough to prove that Jesus, on whom be peace must have come to the Punjab and Kashmir, etc. I set out this evidence herein so that all impartial people may first study it, and then by arranging it as a connected account in their minds, may themselves come to the aforesaid conclusion. Here is the evidence. First, the titles given to the Buddha are similar to the titles given to Jesus. Likewise, the events of the life of Buddha resemble those of the life of Jesus. The reference here, however, is to the Buddhism of places within the boundaries of Tibet, like Lech, Lhasa, Gilgit, and Hams, etc., which are the places about which it is proved that they were visited by Jesus. With reference to the similarity of titles, it is enough to point out that if, for example, Jesus, on whom be peace, calls himself the light in his teachings, so Gautama has been named the Buddha, which in Sanskrit means light. Footnote, page 94. If Jesus has been called the Master in the Gospel, see also Chinese Buddhism by Edkins, Buddha by Oldenburg, translated by W. Hoey, H O E Y, Life of Buddha, translated by Rick Hill. Again, if Jesus has been called the Master in the Gospel, so the Buddha has been called Sasta or the Master. If Jesus has been called Blessed in the Gospels, so the Buddha has been named Sugd, that is, the Blessed. If Jesus has been called Prince, so has the Buddha been called Prince. Jesus has also been described by the Gospels as one who fulfills the object of his coming. So has the Buddha been called in Buddhistic scriptures Siddhartha, that is, one who fulfills the object of his coming. Jesus has also been called by the Gospels the refuge of the tired. So has the Buddha in Buddhistic scriptures been called Asaram Sarn, that is, the refuge of the refugeless. Jesus has also been called by the Gospels King, though he interpreted it as King of the Kingdom of Heaven, so also the Buddha has been called King. The similarity of events is proved by events such as these. Just as Jesus was tempted by the devil with the riches and kingdoms of the world, provided he prostrated himself to him, so was Buddha tempted when the devil said to him that he would give him the pomp and splendor of kings if he abandoned the severity of his living and returned home. But just as Jesus did not obey the devil, so it is recorded the Buddha did not obey him. See Buddhism by T. W. Riss Davids and Buddhism by Sir Manier, Manier Williams, footnotes as mentioned. This shows that the same titles which Jesus ascribes in the Gospels to himself have in Buddhistic books, which were compiled much later, been similarly ascribed to the Buddha. And just as Jesus was tempted by the devil, so these books claim that the Buddha also was tempted by the devil. Nay, the account of the temptation of the Buddha as stated in these books is longer than the account of the temptation of Jesus in the Christian Gospels. It is recorded that when the devil offered him the temptation of wealth and kingly honor, the Buddha was inclined to return home. He, however, did not obey this desire, but the same devil met him again one night, bringing with him all his progeny and frightened him by frightful appearances. To the Buddha, these devils appeared like snakes which were emitting fire from their mouths. The snakes began to throw fire and poison toward him, but their poison was turned into flowers, and the fire made a halo around the Buddha. 
The devil, not having succeeded thus, called sixteen of his daughters and asked them to reveal their beauty to the Buddha, but the latter was still unmoved. The devil was balked in his designs. He adopted other means, but was unable to do anything against the steadfast Buddha, who continued to travel through higher and higher stages of spirituality, and after a long night, that is, after severe and protracted trials, he overcame his enemy, the devil. The light of true knowledge dawned upon him, and with the coming of the morning, that is, as soon as his trials were over, he came to know all. The day this great battle ended was the day of the birth of Buddhism. Gautama was thirty-five years old then. He was called the Buddha, or the light, and the tree under which he was sitting at the time came to be known as the tree of light. Now, if you open and see the Bible, you will find how the temptation of the Buddha resembles the temptation of Jesus, so much so that the Buddha's age was nearly the same at that time as the age of Jesus. As it appears from Buddhist literature, the devil did not appear to the Buddha in a corporeal, visible form. It was a spectacle seen only by the Buddha. The talk of the devil was an evil inspiration. That is, the devil, as he appeared to him, suggested to the Buddha that he, the Buddha, should abandon his course, that he should follow him, the devil, that the devil would give him all the wealth of the world. Likewise, the belief of Christian doctors is that the devil who appeared to Jesus did not come to him in a corporeal form. He did not come to Jesus as a human being, before the very eyes of the Jews, traversing the streets and lanes in his physical body and talking to Jesus so as to be audible to those present. On the contrary, the meeting was of the nature of a vision seen only by Jesus. The talk, too, was of the nature of inspiration. That is, the devil, as is his wont, put into his heart evil suggestions. But Jesus did not accept. He rejected the devil's inspiration. Now it is worth pondering why there was so much resemblance between the Buddha and Jesus. The Aryas, in this connection, say that Jesus became acquainted with Buddhism in the course of his journeys in India, and having acquired knowledge of the fact of Buddha's life, made his gospel out of this on return to his native country. That Jesus composed his moral precepts by plagiarizing the moral teaching of the Buddha. That just as the Buddha called himself the light and knowledge and adopted other titles, so Jesus ascribed all such titles to himself, so much so that even the long story of the temptation of the Buddha was appropriated by him. This, however, is a fabrication of the Aryas, it is quite untrue that Jesus came to India before the event of the cross. He had no need to take such a journey at that time. He had need to take such a journey when the Jews of Judea had rejected him and, as they believed, had crucified him. A fine divine design, however, saved him. Having thus exhausted his sympathy for the Jews and his solicitude to preach to them, and the Jews having become, by reason of their evil nature, so very hard-hearted as to be quite incapable of accepting the truth, Jesus, on being informed by God that the ten tribes of the Jews had migrated towards India, set out for those regions. As parties of Jews had accepted Buddhism, there was no alternative for this true prophet but to turn his attention to the followers of Buddhism. The Buddhist priests of that country expected the appearance of the Messiah, Buddha. Therefore, for Jesus' titles, as well as some of his moral teachings, like Love Thine Enemy, Do Not Resist Evil, and as had been prophesied by Gautama Buddha, Jesus' fair skin, for all these signs, the priests held him to be the Buddha. It is possible also that some of his titles and teachings and the facts of Jesus' life may, consciously or unconsciously, have been ascribed in that age to the Buddha. For the Hindus have never given proof of much aptitude for recording history. The events of Buddha's life had not been recorded till the time of Jesus. Buddhist priests, therefore, had a great opportunity to ascribe to the Buddha anything they wished to ascribe. So it is likely that when they came to know the facts of Jesus' life and his moral teaching, they mixed these with many other things introduced by themselves and ascribed them to the Buddha. Footnote, we cannot deny that the Buddhistic faith from ancient times has had considerable moral teaching in it. But at the same time, I maintain that that part which is merely the teaching of the gospel, the parables and other reproductions from the Bible, was undoubtedly added to the Buddhistic books at the time Jesus was in this country. End footnote. Presently, I shall prove that the moral teaching of the Bible